for a lot of you people um, on here, you may not actually know or be familiar with uh, Carbon Nation TV. And it's one of the channels I was watching at one time. It um, was always kind of out there, kind of like a Gilligan's Island type thing. Uh, just like another world, another way of living, you know, whatever. And, um, you know, we live in a, in a live and let live society. Um, for some people, that's not even enough. You know, it's like, no, you, you live as I say live society, you know, or, you know, how dare you live how you live society. Um, it's, it's weird. It's strange to me. It is, it has, um, to me, it has an air of basic, uh, envy, you know, I mean, if a person chooses to deal with more than one female at one time, if that's the lifestyle that he's living and the women are fine with it, and, and if they marry, if they all marry or whatever it is, uh, you know, these are things that people, these are decisions that people make independently. But what I found is, you know, on, on YouTube, you have these different categories of female thinking. And to me, it's only like about three of them, you know, one, you know, one is basically what I just said, you know, how dare you live in a way that I don't approve of, or basically, um, you know, just insulting people that aren't living the way that you want them to live or just basically being so closed-minded that you're living in a box and you can't see outside that box. So anything outside of that box is Greek to you. You don't understand it. Um, but usually the more aggressive ones are the, are the first ones. You know, how dare you this, how dare you that, you know, confront this, confront that. You know, um, people, have, people make time to confront things in other people's lives, it, at the end of the day, is, isn't even any of their business whatsoever. You know, and um, they don't want to take that time and clean up their own lives. You know, um, I'm going to play some audio here from this interview that he conducted with the black female caller. I think people caller. should try to get to know me more, but I think get to know me through my trolls or through people that hate me. Okay. Um, I just feel like um, there has just been a lot of, you know, he's a father. And I love my father. My father's no longer here. So am I. So am I. And I just couldn't uh, imagine disrespecting my father, you know what I mean, like, like she has done with pops. I just, I don't understand that, you know, and I hope that. Okay, I'm going to intervene here. Things happen. You know, I'm, I'm thinking this is probably one of the people that's also living in a box. You know, it happens. Life happens. It's called life. Life happens. Everybody does not, you know, all situations aren't as your situations are. There are situations where people are disrespected. It just is what it is. I mean, I would think as black females, you guys know that more than anybody. You know, uh, what I'm finding is you guys are so, you know, so uh, offended if someone in your mind disrespects their father or goes against their father's wishes, even though they're grown. But yet at the same time, you all are so quick to lash out and, um, you know, make your opinion about other people known. You know, y'all are so quick to lash out and disrespect people. But yet, on the same token, the flip side of that is you're so offended, you know, if somebody gets disrespected. 
you know, it's like a conundrum. Uh, it takes a person like Carbonation TV to really keep his cool and break this down in such a way that the black female mentality, maybe he can get through to them. He's able to get through to them because he comes off to me as a person that won't be dominated by you, won't be disrespected by you, and will check you when you need to be checked. Uh, to me, this caller really ought to be ought to be ashamed of herself even calling in, having some, you know, inquiring about the personal details of someone's relationship, you know, and trying to dictate how that relationship should be, you know. If I had to guess, she's probably not even in a relationship. But here it is: she's a relationship guru. She's the respect guru. She, you know, it's the big earring guru, you know. Whenever you see these big earrings like this and the hair up and, you know, not a whole lot of makeup to bring out that, you know, outer beauty, that natural outer beauty, at the end of it, there's usually jealousy to me, you know. Men like this are what females like this want, okay? So they're going to nitpick his relationship. And then on top of it, the fact that he, he has more than one female. He has a concubine. So that's a realm that the black female mind, I don't think, can even interpret. You know, that that, you know, a man has such an aura about him that, and a freedom about him that he has a concubine of women, you know. You have to ask yourself, you know, do women like this want to be part of that concubine? Are they jealous because of the fact that he can openly live and or marry, allegedly, I'm not sure, you know, several women, have several families with several women, and you aren't one of them. Or they don't fit the mold that you think that they should fit. Maybe you think they that they should be like you, you know. And it's these types of things that you have to see them as what they are. You know, a lot of these women are just, they're kind of spiteful. You know, they're spiteful. Uh, I think she wanted to be seen. She got seen. I think, you know, she she wants to um, portray pro-black and pro-natural beauty and all these things. And, you know, the, the caring, concerned, strong-minded black female, available black female, or females of your type that may be available, you know, to men that have obviously not chosen women like you to be part of their concubine. And I think at the end, at the end of the day, they're, they're offended by those things. So they pick, you know, things apart in the relationship. They pick things apart in the man. They pick things apart in the woman. They put their nose in it where it doesn't belong and say, well, you know, this shouldn't have happened or how dare that happened or I can't believe, you know, this or that and then you should this and she should that and all that. And at the end of the day, none of it is any of their business. And like I said, it'll take someone with a cool, calm demeanor uh, like this to basically check them. So I'm gonna let this play out and you know, you, 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 a lot of y'all need to clean up your act on what you're doing on here and in your real lives, you know. I was always told, you know, handle your own business, keep your nose out of other folks' business. That's what I was told. You would encourage her to have some type of relationship with her family. You know, I mean, I understand what you went through. As a child. You know, you didn't have your parents, but I think that her father and her. And what about what about what about um? And, and I and I wanna I wanna 
want to say this because of, um, I think that no one's empathetic about me being a father. You know, I'm a father. I have a daughter too. I have a daughter, and he's interfering with my relationship. So it's a, I think that this is one of those situations where you shouldn't get involved in other people's business because it's so personal. Whenever you're dealing with a personal thing with people who's personal lives, you shouldn't get involved because it's like, you know, he's a father too. And, and, and. Well, see, look at her. See, you know, there's a sense of entitlement, you know. Women know when they're sticking their nose where it doesn't belong. And then there's a sense of entitlement, you know, and you can tell that, you know, she's holding in all these negative emotions and these negative, uh, you know, uh, just a whole vibe of, um, I'm just picking up on like despair. You know, I mean, because it's kind of pathetic that, you know, here you are on his platform revealing who you are, sticking your nose where it doesn't belong, and you know that you're doing it, and then yet you're entitled to do it. It's like you're imposing, you know, yourself into someone else's life where you you know you're not welcome. And in my opinion, you know, it's those type of actions that make you ugly on the outside. Because those, those emotions are coming out in you. I see them. It's not a good thing, you know, it's usually, usually it comes from women that have, have, not been able to control other people in their lives, which you can't control anybody else anyway. You know, usually it's, it's, it's um, you know, women that feel entitled, you know, but yet you will never be the creme de la creme. You know, you won't be the first chosen. You may be the first looked at, but once people get an air of what's inside of you, you know, they're automatically looking around, you know, for a better aura. And just the fact that, you know, you feel entitled to insert yourself into someone else's personal life and lives, you know, I think that says a lot about the fact that there's obviously a lot missing within your own life. You know, you don't just have an opinion, but you're inserting yourself into things that doesn't even concern you. You know, and you got women like this. They feel like, you know, because you, you're you there, you know, they, they can pick you. They can pick your head. They can pick your life. They can dictate, you know, how this or that should be or what you or her should do or should not do or aren't doing, you know, or need to do. And, um... You know, you shouldn't even have to explain yourself to people like this. You know, uh, how he has the patience to put up with with this, I'll never know. I'm just kind of disrespecting him and his family. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's kind of like I'm gonna stay out of it because it's it's I don't know the details of what's going on, so I'm gonna stay out of it. That's I'm, I'm, not, trying to, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to get in it. I'm just. Just speaking for, you know, myself. No, I understand your perception of it. I understand you've seen it from a certain view. But, but I'm you're, to, I, you, I'm, you have to remember, huh? you, you're a father, so you have to remember karma. You know, you don't want your daughter, you know, in the future to disrespect you. You know what I mean? You have to think of it that way. Also. Yeah, um, I, I, I also am not going to stalk my daughter. I'm also going to let her make her own decisions and support her decisions. And if I don't support her decisions, just like, just like my, my other kids, their, their mothers want to raise them different. I will separate myself. So as a father, I, there's boundaries. That also that's been broken here that needs to be addressed as well as a woman. And I know that we don't have a lot of good fathers out there and that's being used as the bait to do what he's doing. It, it, it's used as a token to do what he's doing. But 
at the end of the day, we have to also respect boundaries to grown-ass people yeah. that have their own rights to make their own decisions. And just because you're her father doesn't mean you have to cross boundaries. And some of those boundaries has been crossed, in my opinion. Yeah, and, um, you know, women like this, they cross these boundaries. That's what they live for. They breathe for things like this. Each day, they look for a boundary they can cross, you know by inserting their, their noses where it doesn't belong, you know, uh, disrespecting people, you know, living in a box by, and then having the mentality like, you know, oh, you know, you live like this, you live like that, or you this or you that. Usually these women are miserable women, uh, and as he stated, he's a father, but, you know, a lot of these women are stuck with kids that the fathers want nothing to do with. And they turn bitter. And then they wonder why no one will ever see them in a relationship type, you know, perspective. It's all just a physical manifestation of releasing their frustrations on, you know, on them. You know, just basically, you know, putting them to bed and releasing whatever frustrations you may have and then keeping it moving, you know, and, and this makes bitter women, especially when they see, you know, someone like this with a lot of flair, you know, that has that extra something about him that women flock to and he pick and chooses who's in his concubine. You know, and to see men like this, it makes certain women bitter because they're stuck with kids and men that want nothing to do with them. They'll deal with the kids, but they're only going to deal with you only on to a certain degree because of what you emit, you know, the disrespect you remit, the you emit the um, negativity you emit, you know, the spitefulness you emit, the, um, the just sticking your nose in something and knowing that you're doing it intentionally, you know, those types of things, like just picking, you know, and then above all, this sense of entitlement. You know, uh, you're not entitled. The only thing you're entitled to do is just is uh, wipe your behind like anybody else. You know, but, you know, they take these things so personally because they're they're stuck in their misery. You know, that's why you see, you know, the large earrings, the, the eyebrows up way up than they need to be. The nostrils, you know, fully, you know, dilated nostrils. And then, you know, the scowl, you know, the mouth scowl, you know. All of this reflects what's going on in here, which reflects what's going on in here. And like I say, you know, it takes someone like him to break it down to these women, but at the end of the day, they still won't understand because they aren't part of his con of, of his concubine. And nine times out of ten, they're not part of anybody's concubine. They're just left with kids that the man don't want anything to do with so, them. Like I said, if I was you looking in, I would back out of it. Like, look, this is personal. You know, he's a father. That's her father. That's none of my business. Let me not get too involved in that because at the end of the day, it's just not anything that you know, yeah. But at the same time, excuse me, but at the same time, she brought her father. You know what I mean? She contacted him. She she brought him into it. So as a okay. father, of course, he's going to react and go right. run right. the pilot. You, you know what I mean? Originally, she did. Originally, um, the the people brought him in originally, and you know. I feel like Eliana, and I'm just speaking for her or understanding her from a personal view. Um, she, at one point, she wants to believe that her dad is there for her. 
she really does want to believe that. You know what I'm saying? And with that being stated, she um, she did run to him one time because she kind of fantasized with the mm -hmm. idea that he was actually going to be there for her. You know what I'm saying? And um, and when she realized his reaction, she then came back. She was like, oh, this nigga, he, he don't really care about me. But I think deep inside, Eliana wants that relationship with her father. And what he's doing right now is destroying that relationship uh, with, with, with violating her boundaries, her decisions, her choices, and not supporting her right or wrong. And if you're not going to support her to give her space, um, you know, she's in love with me and you're disrespecting her choices. You're disrespecting her, her choices. And when you disrespect her choices, you're violating her. No one's thinking about how Eliana must feel in this. We're only looking at it from Pops. And I get it. But you're not really understanding that it didn't start off with Eliana being disrespectful. This was an ongoing thing. And then Eliana got fed up. She got fed up. And she was like, you know, basically back off. Like, you know, like, you know, it, was, it, didn't, it didn't start out that way. But what do you advocate that you don't allow her to have any time with her family? You know, like, you know what I mean. Like you don't allow you able to convert. And they never stop. You know, I mean, he just broke it down to her ABC one two three, and the whole circumference of it all. He covered the whole perimeter in a way that she'll never comprehend. They don't get it. They keep going on and on and on and on. And then they, at the end of the day, they wonder why they're left with kids and the man only deals with the kids.